What is rate controlling medications to treat the symptoms of atrial fibrillation? So there are three major ways we have of treating the symptoms of atrial fibrillation. And the symptoms are the rapid heart rates that the AFib makes your heart go at that causes symptoms. The faster it makes your heart go, the more symptoms you're probably gonna have. And there's three major ways. So remember that the more aggressive the treatment, the longer lasting results you're probably gonna get. So the first stage of treatment, which everybody usually gets put on some of this or tried on this when they first develop atrial fibrillation is what we call rate controlling medications. So these are medications that usually are coming from uh, a, two families of drugs, one called beta blockers and the other one called calcium channel blockers. Digoxin, which is a very old medicine, also falls into the category of rate controlling medications. So what do rate controlling medications do? They do what the name implies. They slow down the rate of atrial fibrillation, the heart rate. So if you say, hey, I'm going in and out of AFib, I'm at an early stage, I'm only in it, you know, 5% of the time, a couple hours here and there, and when I'm in it, my heart rates are fast, 130s to 150s, and I feel the palpitations. Well, you may say, hey, I want to treat that, but I don't use something too risky. So we can use rate controlling medications, a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker. And what these medicines do is they slow your heart rate down in atrial fibrillation. So if your atrial fibrillation is at a you know, range of anywhere from 100 to 150 beats per minute, well, it's gonna shift that whole range down. So instead, now when you go into AFib, instead of it being at rates of 100 to 150, it might be at rates of 80 to 120 beats per minute. And here's the thing, people usually or oftentimes only feel the symptoms of atrial fibrillation when they're at rapid speeds, usually over 120, 130 beats per minute. If you're an AFib at a slightly faster speed, if your normal rhythm was going at 60 or 70 beats per minute and you go into AFib at 80 or 90 beats per minute, most people probably wouldn't even feel that they're an AFib because it's just not that fast. So the speed has a lot more to do with whether you're gonna have a lot of symptoms than just being in AFib. So if somebody you know, is in AFib 90% of the time and their average heart rate in AFib was 90 beats per minute, even though their normal speed and normal rhythm was 60 beats per minute, they might still feel okay and say, look, you know, I'm 80 something years old. I don't need the perfect result. Just slow my heart rate down. Uh, if AFib's not like directly life-threatening and you're just treating symptoms, maybe this is good enough for me. A 50 year old may say, that's not good enough for me. I don't want my AFib to keep progressing and become permanent. Uh, I might offer some more aggressive treatment like an ablation or something else to try to get a longer lasting result. But Slowing it down oftentimes works very, very well, especially in the early stages when you're not in AFib very much. So then we just put you on a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker or a little bit of digoxin, and we just try to slow your heart rate down. So when you do go into atrial fibrillation, your heart rates are slower and you just tolerate it better. Either you don't feel it or you just feel the faster episodes. Because if you say, hey, I only feel palpitations when my heart rate's over 110, well, then if your AFib is going from 90 to 140 and you feel that every time it's above 110, you're going to feel most of those episodes. But if we put you on a rate controlling drug and slow your heart rate down so that when you go into AFib, your heart rates are 80s to 120, then you may only feel the episodes that are 110 to 120, which means a lot of those episodes you no longer feel and you feel super happy. You're like, hey, whether I'm going in or out or in or out of it, I don't know, but I feel great. This is good enough. Now, the advantage of this is that these kinds of medicines, these rate controlling medicines are very safe medications. They have no dangerous long-term side effects. You know, they have some minor side effects like beta blockers can make you feel tired and a little bit more lethargic. The calcium channel blockers can cause some ankle swelling or some constipation, but nothing serious. There's no serious or dangerous side effects to these medications. That's why anybody can put somebody on these medicines for atrial fibrillation, even non-cardiologists, primary care doctors can put somebody on these medicines and there's no harm for that. A lot of people are on these kinds of drugs to lower their blood pressure uh, anyways. And so you could take these medicines for the rest of your life and never have a problem. But think about it. They're not doing that much. They're not actually getting you out of AFib and they're not keeping you from going into AFib. They're just slowing it down so that you don't feel it as much. So sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't, that's when people say, look, I'm feeling the AFib, 
you know, I'm starting to have more and more the AFib's progressing. I'm not just in it once in a while. I'm in it fairly regularly or weekly or every other day. And now I'm, you know, it's slower and it feels better, but I'm still feeling it. Can you make me not be in atrial fibrillation? Can you make the AFib not wake up? And that's where we would go to more aggressive treatment options like antrythmic drugs to keep it asleep or ablation to get rid of it from the inside. But those kinds of treatment options are more risky stronger drugs with stronger side effects or a procedure or a procedure with procedural risks than just slowing it down. So it just kind of depends. And also you have to be a little bit careful because when you do slow down the heart rate for AFib, especially when people are going in and out of AFib in the earlier stages, when they're in their normal rhythm, sometimes their normal rhythm is not that fast, especially as we get older. When we get older, it is natural for our normal rhythm source at the roof of our heart to get old and start to malfunction and go slower. And so if we're on a bunch of medicines to slow down our heart rate when we're in AFib, and then when we're not in AFib, those medicines are gonna slow our normal rhythm down. They don't care what rhythm you're in. These medicines slow your heart rate down no matter what rhythm you're in, abnormal or normal. And if your normal rhythm's not too fast to begin with, it may make it so slow where now we're causing a problem. We treat your AFib by slowing it down, but now we're making your normal rhythm too slow and you're feeling tired or lightheaded or draggy. And that's where we may need to go to a different treatment option to actually maintain you in normal rhythm with a stronger drug or an ablation, or put a pacemaker in to treat your slow heart rates so that you can tolerate being on high doses of these rate controlling medications. So these rate controlling medications have their pros and cons. They're not super duper strong medications. They have no really bad long-term side effects, but they're not really getting you out of AFib. They're not keeping the AFib from waking up. They're not keeping the AFib from growing stronger. They're just slowing it down. Uh, which sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't, but sometimes it can make your normal rhythm too slow. And they all, except for digoxin, they all lower your blood pressure. And sometimes we just can't control your heart rate in AFib well enough because by going up on the dose of these medicines, we make your blood pressure too low. So there are pros and cons to this medicine, but as a whole, they are very safe medications that even non-cardiologists can prescribe without any issue. Having said that, if you start getting into the stronger medications like antiarrhythmic drugs to suppress, those are more powerful medicines with stronger side effects. Only a cardiologist or electrical cardiologist like, like myself should be prescribing those medications.